welcome to another episode of In the Studio. I'm Lynn Weaver, and the topic, our topic today, is the uh, collection, new organic collection program coming to Davis in uh, July and August. And to talk a little more about this so that we understand what it is, is Jennifer Gilbert. Uh, she is the conservation coordinator for the town and welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for being on our show and I'm looking forward to learning more about this program. Well, thank you very much. So the way I understand it, this new program will be a city-wide program that yes. has already been tested uh, and will be implemented uh, city-wide. Yes, that's correct. Okay, so let's try and attempt to uh, describe how this program is different from the one we have now. Okay. For example, now at least I know that uh, the branches and the leaves are collected once a week and then I put out my recycling and my garbage once a week as well. So now we're going to add the organic waste mm -hmm. uh, to this uh, uh, collection. So. Can you tell me a little more how it's going to happen? Sure. Um, so right now, all single family homes in Davis have a garbage cart and a recycling cart. That's right. So um, once this program starts this summer, um, single family homes will be giving a third cart, um, the organics uh, cart. So um, that cart, you can place all of your yard material debris from your landscape clippings, and you can put food scraps, food soiled paper, um, you know, tissues, Kleenex, uh, paper products like um, paper plates, paper cups, corn cobs, bones, eggshells, all that so, kind of stuff so can go in there. So food, mm -hmm. leaves, branches, yes, and everything paper. Can go. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. So here we have a picture of this. Uh, <laughs> it's a very attractive picture. So uh, you've already described mm -hmm. what this, uh, what these are. So, for example, can you? Talk a little bit about this picture. I'm sure you had some, yeah. something to do with that. <laughs> yeah. So this picture is showing the organic waste cart and what can be placed in the organic waste cart and then what would still be, go, pl be placed in the yard material piles. So the yard material piles that you were describing earlier, they're not going away. Oh, um, all right. We'll still have yard okay. material piles just instead of... Um, those piles being um, picked up every single week and material being placed out in the street every single day. Yes. The yard material piles will only be picked up once a month mm -hmm. and then every week during the leaf drop season. So mid-October to mid-December when we have the most leaf fall, um, every week those piles will still be picked up. But then for the rest of the year, it's just one week out of the year where they're doing pickup. Um, in order to make sure that we don't have yard debris just sitting in the street for weeks and weeks before pickup, yes. um, the yard, um, yard material can only be placed out five days before a scheduled pickup. I see. So, so before we go a little further on mm -hmm. this, uh, I'd like to show the new cart. Mm -hmm. And apparently what differentiates it from the other cart is it has a brown top. Yes, and that's and, consistent yes. with the rest of the county too. So countywide um, in Yellow County, all the organic waste carts have brown lids, Woodland, West Sacramento, unincorporated. So we wanted to make sure that we're similar as the other jurisdictions around us. So brown lid means organic waste. So we can put our brown lid cart mm -hmm. somewhere else and it yeah. will be picked up. And you can think about well. the compost yeah. is going to be, the stuff that's placed in the brown lid cart is going to turn into compost, which is brown. So you I kind of see. have an association with that. A very philosophical mm -hmm. association. <laughs> yeah. So um, how do I know as a resident, mm -hmm. what do I still put out on the curb, mm -hmm. branches, leaves and everything, and what I can throw into this uh, mm -hmm. brown top lid? So anything that can fit into the brown topped um, cart should yes. go into the brown topped cart. I mean, anything larger, like a large branch that's not going to fit, you would save that oh, for see. putting it in the piles I on see. the street. And yes. um, we want to see all grass clippings and leaves placed in the cart, mm -hmm. unless the cart's already full. That material can easily be blown by the wind, you know, all over the street or down and into a is, storm that's drain. True. Oh, all the time. It is yeah. because people generally leave it out for many days. Mm -hmm. So the, definitely, the idea of having it uh, a time limit 
Mm -hmm. uh, five days before five days. the pickup mm -hmm. makes a lot of sense. And five days allows that even if you have a pickup like on a Thursday, you still have the weekend prior to do the yard work at that's home. Right. So we, that's why there's five days is so that everybody has a chance to utilize the weekend. Right. And then the recycling bin, mm -hmm. the normal recycling paper and uh, uh, covers or mm -hmm. whatever. Bottles and cans. Mm -hmm. Yes, bottles and cans. Mm -hmm. uh, still remains yes once a week mm -hmm. once a week and what yes. about the actual trash see that's the fun part because once this program is it starts the fun part? it is the fun part okay. because you get to <laughs> once this, okay i'm going to convince you <laughs> once this program starts there's going to be hardly anything that should be going in that cart the only thing that can go that's not going to be recyclable or compostable is stuff like you know expanded polystyrene like styrofoam or plastic wrap and diapers pretty much everything else is either going to be accepted for compost or will be recycled. Even if you think out, if you go to, you know, go to get some takeout food and you've got your cup with its lid and the straw, the cup is going to be compostable because it's a paper product. Yes. It's compostable. The lid and the straw are recyclable. Yes. yes. The bag is compostable. So there's so much that's going to be able to be composted that you're going to be able to change your garbage cart for a smaller size. Yeah. So you're going to have less space being taken up. Yes. And then you can get a discount on your garbage bill. Cause. All right. So, so you, it, is, it is better. It is exciting. <laughs> it, it is exciting. And you've explained it very nicely. And I think uh, I'm clear now about what's going to happen, what I should put out and mm -hmm. put in. Um, but now let's talk about the reasons for doing this. Mm -hmm. Now, I understand that uh, at the moment, the uh, landfill, uh, the organic waste, if you like, the food product mm -hmm. that we now put in the, in the trash bin, mm -hmm. are generally, they generally go into the landfill. Yes. And one of, the, uh, one of the problems with landfills is that for organic waste in landfills is that they uh, emanate a lot of methane, yes. which of course is a very bad gas when we talk of climate change. Mm -hmm. uh, now, I understand now these organic things will be going into a compost, mm -hmm. like a gigantic <laughs> compost pile. Yes. So explain to me, and I'm putting you on a start, start here, <laughs> explain to me how it is different. The mm -hmm. compost pile, doesn't that also give off all this methane? No, it doesn't. So okay. um, composting is um, an uh, aerobic process. Yes. So as an aerobic process, it doesn't generate methane gas. Methane gas is produced as a byproduct of anaerobic de um, decomposition, yes. like what would happen in a landfill because there's no air. So in a composting um, facility, they're injecting lots of air into the piles so that it's, an it's aerobic. So there is no methane produced from that system. Well, that's very so interesting. So it's, it's much better, yeah. And it is, it has been proved, of course, mm -hmm. because you've tested this with restaurants in time? Yes, we've been collecting yeah. food scraps from um, restaurants uh, since 2000, I want to say 11 or 12. We've been doing this for a number of years, um, and they've been doing a fabulous job. We've been collecting about five tons of food scraps every week from restaurants. And five tons? Uh, five tons, yeah. So we've been testing this for a number of years to work out any bugs, no pun intended, in the system that might be with collecting these. So we know yes. what the issues are. Yes. We know how to address them. Um, we've got a lot of data already about how the collection process works. Yes. So now we're just ready to roll this out. Well, it seems uh, like you've done all your homework mm -hmm. and uh, you've tested it, which is very reassuring. Uh, I just wanted to show maybe our last picture, which is uh, um, a, a diagram there it is. Um, so this is uh, the new, the new collection uh, types. Could you maybe describe this a little sure. bit? Sure. So yeah. the the cart at the top is the organics um, cart, and you see there are uh, different types of food scraps and some and yard the debris. brown lid and the brown lid on yes. that cart. Yeah, and you can even see things like you know takeout containers, milk cartons, chopsticks. Um, pizza boxes that can go into that cart. Yes. Um, then in the middle is the recycling cart that we have right now, um, just showing the wide variety of materials that you can place into that recycling cart. And then the garbage cart, I'd really like to put a tiny, tiny picture of a garbage cart in there because it should be so much smaller. Yeah. Because you see the only thing that's left there really is, you know, some polystyrene, bag of chips, plastic, a diaper, and a broken ceramic plate. I mean, there's not much left. <laughs> and rags, so, maybe, or something Yeah, like something that, like that, yes. yeah. And some scraps of wood. 
I suppose. Uh, compost. Yeah, you can compost. Oh, you can compost wood, mm -hmm. of course, of course. All right. Well, this is this gives us an idea of uh, what we can look forward mm -hmm. to. Except that for the the current trash mm -hmm. bin, it should be tiny <laughs> because otherwise people will keep throwing a lot of mm -hmm. of the organic waste. Continue yeah. to throw, and that brings us to my other question: How are you going to enforce this? So we're still working on a plan, uh, the, the detailed plan of how we're going to do this, but it's mostly just going to be edu an educational process. Mm -hmm. um, we've already started with um, a number of community meetings, inviting the public to come and ask questions and learn about it. Um, I'm reaching out to the homeowners associations and meeting with them and doing presentations to their boards and to their members. Um, yes, and I'm glad a number you mentioned of different that ways. Mm -hmm. because uh, you have here, you've given me a list of uh, workshops mm -hmm. uh, that are uh, coming and one yes. is on the 16th of February, mm -hmm. and and by the way, at some point uh, we can display uh, the uh, web link so that uh, everyone can go and uh, read a little more about this uh, program. So there is a um, uh, there is a workshop on on February 16th. It's a Tuesday, and it's in the game room of the Veteran Memorial Center. And then there's another one on the 25th of February in the same location, and mm -hmm. sorry I didn't say the, the, the date, uh, I mean the time, 6.30 and 6.30, mm -hmm. and I'm sure that you'll have other uh, yes. workshops as we go Most into definitely. the spring and mm -hmm. July, August. Um, how, uh, how difficult do you think this is going to be? To, will you have a lot of resistance from the town? We will have some. Um, we, we know that there are some people are very, very excited about this and some people are not so excited. Um, this entire program is a compromise. It's a hybrid program between, there's a lot of people in town that love the yard waste piles and they don't want to see those going away. That's right. And then there's another whole section of the population that really does not like them. They don't mm -hmm. ever use them. They don't have large yards and they don't have the need for these piles. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we've got two completely separate for groups and we had to find some meeting yeah. in the middle and that's how we came up with this program. Yeah. It's a very similar program to what Woodland and Sacramento has. We try to simplify it a little bit mm -hmm. um, and make it Davis specific and that's how we got where we are. So is the goal now, assuming everybody is very conscientious and mm -hmm. does uh, and, and dutiful, how the goal is to be 75, 80%? 75% waste diversion by 2020 is the state's goal and the city's goal too. Mm -hmm. um, right now we're at 64%, so we're really close. Um, that last that last little bit is, is gonna be the tough one. So. And a and, uh, uh, question comes to mind, what do you do with this compost? It's sent to a composting facility and turned into a soil amendment, which is then sold back to farmers. And uh, we're, we're working out a deal with them, so hoping to get some of the compost back to give to our residents as well. Free? That's the deal, that's the goal. Okay, mm -hmm. well, you know, this is wonderful. Thank you so much for coming to talk to to us about this new program. And I'm afraid we're out of time. Mm -hmm. uh, it went very quickly. It was very interesting. Uh, so again, thank you so much for your time and for the great job that you do. And thank you all for watching. And if you'd like to watch this program again, you know, you can go to our website at dctv.davismedia.org and there you can stream this program. We're also on YouTube, so you can see some of the previous programs uh, on YouTube. And on our website, when you're there, you can check out some of our other uh, programs and topics. We have uh, interesting topics and uh, outstanding guests. So from all of us here at Davis Media Access, thank you for watching and see you next time.